Well, welcome back to another subscriber Q&A. This one is brought to us by Craig Peterson, who has a two-part question regarding the Tesla battery and pricing, and moreover, how that's going to affect the pricing of the Cybertruck. And uh, what I'm looking at also is not only how it's going to affect the Cybertruck, but how it's also going to affect all of Tesla's other models as well. So, Craig, grab yourself a beverage and let's uh, get into this. So I think a good place to kick us off here is that uh, Craig is absolutely correct in that there aren't a lot of people that are discussing the battery and pricing and, and that type of a thing as it relates not only to Tesla's Cybertruck, but also to the other vehicles in its lineup. And I think the reason that they're not doing so is probably the same reason that I haven't really been doing so. And that is, is that there's just so many variables. When you start to look at things like the solid state or million mile uh, battery that they're that they're coming up with it's just very difficult to know how that's going to wind up scaling up and what are going to be the ramifications of that economy of scale how much of a reduction in price are we actually looking at and so the uh, thing that Craig points out is, is is he's looking at the Tesla Model 3 and I think that uh, it's wrong to look at just one of the Tesla models. I think that what you have to do, if we're going to start discussing the ramifications of pricing, I think we have to start looking at all of the vehicles in uh, Tesla's lineup. Now, the trouble ahead that I can see for uh, Tesla in, in that regard is that as the prices of the batteries come down, you're talking about taking the most expensive component in the vehicle and drastically reducing its price. And the problem that they're going to have is, is that currently, if you have the a, a well-equipped Model 3 versus a, a, a decently equipped long-range Model S, you wind up having that $30,000 range there, and that's considerable. So it's like, oh, well, if you're going to, you're talking about range and the, a little bit of extra size, that $30,000 difference is, is, is a big jump. But as the battery prices start to come down, you're going to start to see the difference in pricing on these cars reduce. And if it gets to the point where you're into that kind of a ten or fifteen thousand dollar difference between the cars well then people are going to they're going to migrate to the larger and longer range model s i think that that's just a natural progression and if tesla intends to keep the model s which i think they will uh, then they're going to have to figure out a way to cement it into that premium bracket now short term they're doing that by putting out the three motor version of their Plaid Model S. And again, that's gonna obviously be at a bit, of a, a bit of a premium, so you keep that separation. But in a longer term, I think that in around 2023, 2024, we're actually going to wind up seeing them releasing a monster version of their Model S that will have a range probably in the high fours, low 500 mile uh, uh, range, uh, four motors on it, uh, uh, full vectored steering uh, for uh, uh, for uh, handling, uh, and they'll probably also do some some interior upgrades again to try and keep it in that BMW 7 Series range, so that you always have that difference in price between the Model 3 and the Model S and that it's always worth it. It's always worth that, that, that little bit of extra that you're going to wind up paying for the car. Now, they're going to be able to release that car because they're going to leverage the same technology that they're going to use for the uh, Tesla Roadster battery and the larger batteries for the Cybertruck. 
And this is where we're really going to kind of need that drink. We mentioned that the Cybertruck is going to have, when released, a range of 800 miles. Now, before you get too excited about that, what you have to understand about that is, is that all that really means is, is that it's going to have a range of about 240 to 300-ish miles when towing. Again, it's all going to depend on what kind of a trailer that you're towing, but we've also already seen several towing videos of people using the Model X for towing. And this gives us a good idea of what we're going to be looking at when we're looking at the Cybertruck as far as terms of towing. Now, a Model X that gets 320 miles of range winds up being reduced to about 100 miles of range once you hook a trailer to it. Now, nobody is going to accept a Cybertruck with a towing range of 100 miles. That's not going to happen. And so now what we need to do is we need to take a closer look at those, uh, those two vehicles as far as what their capacities are. And none of this technology exists in its own little box. It's all dovetailed together. I don't think that we would be talking about Cybertrucks and their batteries at all if it wasn't for the Model 3, the... Tesla Semi, the Roadster, all of these have technologies that are uh, meshed very closely with the upcoming products that we're seeing from Tesla, especially now the three motor version of the uh, Model S and, and again also as we discussed as those battery prices start to come down. So let's take a look at uh, what we already know about the Model X and towing. And so this is a uh, Model X towing a trailer. So this is from a video that I chose because I thought that it typified what's going to be kind of a, an average towing uh, uh, rating for the, uh, uh, for the, the Cybertruck. We're looking here at a, a trailer weight. They weighted down this horse trailer to 4,460 pounds and that gave a uh, total vehicle weight of just under 10,000 pounds, 9,800 and change. And so I, though it's pretty high for the Model X, I think that it's pretty typical for what one is going to expect in the Cybertruck. And so in the case that we have here, it reduced the Model X's range from 320 miles down to a range of a little over 100. Let's go ahead and call it 120 to make the math easy. And so that opens up our final two questions about the Cybertruck that once we answer them, we should be able to figure out what the overall range is going to have to be on the Cybertruck. And the first one is, what's our acceptable range? And then the second one obviously is, how efficient is the Cybertruck? Well, so the first one, what's an acceptable range for towing? Well, obviously it's not 120 miles. That's not gonna work. Is it 240 miles? It's closer, yeah, that's, that's closer. 360 looks a lot better, all right? But now remember that is a Model X with a, with a 300 kilowatt hour battery that will get you that range. Now we have to take a look at what's the going, what's going to be the efficiency overall of the uh, Cybertruck. It's certainly not going to be as efficient as the Model X. And the figure that I kind of came up with was if you put the same 100 kilowatt hour battery that the Model X has in the Cybertruck, that you'd probably have a, a range of somewhere around 240 miles, somewhere uh, around that point. I'm think, I think I might be being a little kind there. Obviously, the Cybertruck is quite a bit larger. Uh, its uh, weight, they didn't really go into. They said it's about the same weight as a Ford F-150. Um, but uh, then you have the inefficiency with the larger truck tires. And so I think that the 240 miles would be a good, uh, a good range to argue. Now at 240 miles, if you then put a 300 kilowatt hour battery in that, at 240 miles of efficiency, that's 720 miles of range. And then if you want to argue that your efficiency could go as high as say uh, in the, the 260 range, now you're up uh, around that, that 800 
mile range mark. And so I think that that shows us what we're actually going to wind up seeing uh, with the Cybertruck. I feel strongly that it's going to wind up having to have the, the larger of the offerings, right? I think that it's going to wind up having to have uh, that battery size. Uh, it'll probably come obviously with a, a variety of different size batteries, uh, maybe even as low as a 100 kilowatt hour battery, hard to say, but I have a, uh, I, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to make a crystal ball prediction, I'm going to say that uh, uh, it's going to come with a 300 mile battery. And I'm actually going to say that that is going to wind up putting it in by the time you uh, factor in what Craig was talking about, where you have that uh, economy of scale and the reduction of price, they'll probably be able to name that tune for somewhere around $80,000, $90,000, even with a battery that large in it once it, uh, uh, once it comes out. And so I think that that's probably what, uh, what I'll close the video with and what I will uh, stick to as a prediction. I really do think that it's going to have to be that large of a battery. That then also opens up other avenues in that if you're using the trailer to tow locally for something like a lawn care company, company or a construction company, that kind of a thing, that not only will you have enough range to tow your trailer around locally, but then you'll also be able to charge your lawnmowers and your uh, other uh, equipment, some power tools, uh, uh, run some saws off of it during, uh, uh, during a work day. And so, uh, yeah, I think that, that uh, I think that that'll be the prediction that I'll uh, stick to. I look forward to reading your comments and uh, seeing what your thoughts are on it. And Craig, thank you very much for the uh, fantastic uh, question. And we will see you all next time.